Welcome everyone to our latest episode of Jim and Java. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. This channel is designed to answer your fundraising questions. Each week we address questions submitted to us over the week and we attempt to answer as best we can each and every question that we have and every question is important to us. Make sure that before we go too far that you subscribe to this channel. If you hear today what you, uh, what you liked, make sure you click the, the thumbs up and give it a, a, a like. And if you've got any comments, please put those down in the comments section. Uh, especially today, we're going to talk about mission statements. And I'd like to know specifically if you have a mission statement and if you feel like it's accurate and up to date. If you need to reach out to us with specific questions, and you're on Twitter, go out to DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java and we'll answer your questions. If you need to just reach out to me very privately, please do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com and I'll answer your questions there as well too. So let's dive right into our first set of questions. Our first question today is from Bobby in Tampa, Florida. And Bobby says, wanting to craft a good mission statement, what elements need to be included? Well, Bobby, that's a great question, and it's so important, and I've had to craft my own and create my own mission statements uh, over the years with uh, organizations that I've worked with and helped to craft them for other organizations. First of all, it's so important for you to understand who your audience is because that's one of the first things that you are going to want to do. It's the mission of our organization, too, um, and make sure that you understand first of all who your uh, who you're reaching out to who your audience is if your organization is designed to serve homeless people in Washington DC as an example um, you can you could start out uh, the mission of XYZ organization is to serve the homeless population in the Washington DC area through and then it's important the next step to list what activities, program strategies you do through the, a food bank, through uh, cooperation with the community, through um, um, camps and information, and then you need to make sure that so you have a so that in every good mission statement, so that the Washington DC community will be a better place to live or that the Washington DC community will be um, will be served and everyone in the Washington DC community will see a, a a lighthouse for the cause whatever we're we're doing so it's important that in any good mission statement you've got your audience you've got your activities and you've got the so that you've got your outcome it's so important that those elements are included in every good mission statement and you also it's as part of the overall it is important as you start through your process of putting together a good mission statement that you understand the problem that you're starting you're trying to solve I've mentioned that often in our proposals that that you want to make sure that to your donors you're communicating so that they understand clearly what is the problem that exists and why was our organization created in the first place if it was to end homelessness or end hunger or eliminate human trafficking in the Washington DC area that is important because that helps you craft number one who your audience is and it also helps you to understand what kind of programs and activities should be listed on your mission statement a mission statement should never be long it really does not need to be more than one sentence in all reality I've seen mission statements that are paragraphs long I've seen mission statements that are multiple sentences long it a really a good mission statement should be very succinct and to the point and it's so important that you make sure that your mission statement and every word that you put in that mission statement needs to be thought through and and you need to choose every word carefully because you don't want to say more than you need to say 
because it's so important that your mission statement is transferable in your marketing as you communicate with your donors it is so important that everyone within the organization has has a say in helping to craft the mission statement and it's especially important that your board your leadership and your staff and your volunteers all understand what the mission is and all are helping to fulfill the mission. I can't tell you how many organizations I've counseled, I've helped over the years, and each level of leadership from the board, the senior leadership, middle management, staff, and volunteers, all may have a different definition of what the organization is and does. And it is so important that if you want to have everyone working and moving in the same direction, it's critical that you make sure that everyone understands the mission statement and why it was crafted the way it was, even to the point where staff, board, volunteers memorize the mission statement. So everyone is saying the same thing and everyone is moving in the same direction. That's why it's so important that you keep your mission statement short, succinct, and to the point. So Bobby, I hope that helped answer your question. Don't forget, what's your audience? What are your programs and your services? And the so that, where are we headed? What's our outcome? What do we eventually want to do? So thanks again for that question, Bobby. Our second question of the day is from Ted in Irvine, California. And Ted asks, how do I recruit board members who are focused on fundraising? Ted, thank you very much for that question. Uh, I get it so often from the area of recruiting board members. It is so important that you recruit the, the right individuals to be on your board of directors because the wrong board of directors can set a negative tone and really drag your organization down. And I've seen board members who are way over their heads and don't know how to take an organization from a startup to a mid-level to that, um, that adolescence to adulthood. There are too many organizations that their growth has been stunted or they're similar to a bonsai tree and that their roots have been covered because we have not had the right board members or recruited the right board members. So it's so important that you recruit the right board members. I mentioned uh, in our broadcast last week that I always start with our list of major donors, that 20% that brings in 80% of your dollars. And I like to refer to those individuals as the critical few, those individuals who really are focused in on your organization. They tend to understand your organization, what you're trying to accomplish, and as a result, they give many times sacrificially to your organization or give a good percentage of their assets to your organization. So I always start when recruiting board members, I start with that short list. And then I go through each of the individuals and find out are they the kinds of individuals that collectively we could get along with because it's so important that you have as much unanimity as you possibly can have on your board. I have been on boards where there has just been total dissension and I've been on other boards where there's just been almost every single important decision has been made unanimously and it's wonderful when that happens, when everyone is on the same page. So you want to make sure that those individuals definitely would, would, would be able to relate and get along well with other people on the board. But you also want to make sure before you move into this process, you want to look to see what are the kinds of people that we want on our board. Do we want people who are going to invest their uh, labor in your organization? We want to find individuals who have some margin and could give some time to your organization. From the influence side in the life acrostic, do we want individuals who are networkers, people who have relationships within the community? I think it's vital that every board member have at least some level of networking. Make sure you remember who are the, who are the good networkers in the community. Uh, we find that real estate agents, insurance agents, uh, lawyers, doctors, small business owners all tend to be very good networkers. And so make sure that if networking is important, that you find people who have those professions. Um, certainly the finance side, 
Uh, we've already, they've demonstrated based on their giving that they qualify and are good candidates on the F in life. And then what is their expertise? Do you have a need or a desire to have someone that can come alongside and, and serve as your treasurer on your board, but also can help to oversee some of the financial goings on of your organization so that your CFO or accountant or business manager can have someone who understands on the board, understand finances, a balance sheet, a ledger, um, and, and that they understand exactly how things work financially. Or do you want to have someone that's a good marketer that can help you promote and market your organization? And then also, do you need someone who is good at fundraising? And I think we all need as an organization someone who is willing to be a fundraiser and willing to be an ambassador and spokesperson for your organization. All your board members should be trained up. But if there's someone who you know is an especially good communicator or especially good salesperson, um, they might really be great ambassadors for your organization. So from that standpoint, it's really important that you list out beforehand what are the qualifications, not just the practical qualifications of attending board meetings, uh, making sure they're aligned with us in our mission, vision, values, but also what kinds of things do you want them to bring to the table? Once again, I always love using the life acrostic, labor, influence, finances, and expertise. Always great things for board members to bring to the table. So Ted, I hope that helped to answer your question. Uh, once again, we exist to help you take your nonprofit to the next level. And if you've got questions, please reach out to us in, on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you want to privately send me emails, please do so at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And be sure, as I said, to subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified of our next broadcast. Thanks again for joining us. As I always say, uh, we will, are here to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks.